In this problem, we're told a Cessna aircraft has a liftoff speed of 120 km per hour. A. What minimum constant acceleration does the aircraft require if it is to be airborne after a takeoff run of 240 meters? B. How long does it take for the aircraft to become airborne? So there's two parts of this problem, but let's just go ahead and draw what's going on first. So we have this aircraft, right? And so it's going to have a liftoff speed of this. So what we have is this runway, right? And we have this aircraft. I'm just going to draw a box because I can't draw an aircraft. But imagine we have this uh, box, right? So here's it at the beginning. It's going to travel some distance and it's going to take off right here, right? And so at this end point, it's going to have a takeoff speed of 120 kilometers per hour. So its velocity here, they're telling us, is 120 kilometers per hour, right? And so what we know is for A, it says what minimum constant acceleration does the aircraft require if it is to be airborne after a takeoff run of 240 meters? So we know the distance it's going to be travel is 240 meters, right? Because that's what they want us to do. And so what else do we also know? So we know at the beginning of the runway, it's going to be at zero, right? It's velocity or V sub zero, its initial velocity is zero meters per second. Why? Because the car is not moving, right? So it's going to start at rest, it, then it's going to accelerate up, traveling this 240 meters, and then at this point, it's going to take off with this speed, right? So these are all the variables we're given. Uh, and then let's just go ahead and solve. So we solve these problems using kinematic equations, right? These on the right. So the first thing you always want to do is just find the variables in these equations and determine whether or not you have them, right? So we have delta x, we have v, we have v sub zero, we have a, and we have t, right? So those are the five variables on the kinematic equations in the right. So let's determine whether or not we have these variables. So delta x is the change in position. Are we changing position? Yes. And so we're changing 240 meters. So its change in x is just going to be four, uh, 240 meters, right? That's its runway. v, its velocity at the end, right? Its final velocity is essentially just going to be a 120 kilometers per hour, right? That's its takeoff speed, the velocity at the end of this interval. Uh, v sub zero is the initial speed, which is going to be zero meters per second, right? A is acceleration. That's what we're trying to solve for in A, right? So what minimum, or what's the minimum constant acceleration for A? That's what we're solving for. And then B is how long does this take? So uh, we're solving for both of these variables, A and T, given these variables. Okay, so now we've uh, determined what we're given and what we're not. And so let's go ahead and start with A. So A wants us to find acceleration. So if you look at these equations here, we're going to pick one which one to use, right? So keep in mind, we're not using t for this one because that's in the second part. So we're not going to use any of these. But if you notice, we're given v, we're given v sub zero, and we're given delta x. So what we can do is use it to solve for a. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're solving for a, and so we're going to use this equation. So v squared equals v sub zero squared plus 2a times delta x. So what you have to do is make sure when you solve these problems, they're in the correct units. So I always write my velocity as when, if it's zero as meters per second because when you solve these problems, generally you want them in meters. Notice this is in meters, right? And this isn't right so we got to convert this into meters per second because that's uh you want these to be in meters and meters per second right when you solve these so uh let's convert this so 120 kilometers per hour right write it like this so we got to convert uh hours to seconds so we know that there's 60 minutes in an hour we actually write it on the bottom sorry so this is hour over 60 minutes right so that'll cancel the hours now we have it in kilometers per minute but we want it in seconds so we know that there's one minute for every 60 seconds. So no, notice, or notice now it's going to be in seconds, kilometers per second. But we want it in uh, meters. So if we want to get rid of the kilometers, 1 km is 1,000 meters. Right? That's a conversion you need to know. And so that's going to cancel the kilometers, and you're just going to have it in meters per second. So you just want to do 120 right, times 1,000. And then you're going to want to go ahead and divide that by... Uh, 60 times 60 is 3,600. So just divide by 3,600. So when you do this, you're going to get 33.333 and so on. I'm not going to write it, but I'm just going to erase it now and we'll write it back there. So 33.33 and then keep in mind the units. It's meters per second now. That's what we wanted to convert it to. So 33.33 meters per second. So uh, just write this right here. So 33.33 meters per second. So now we've got in the correct units, we can go ahead and solve. So keep in mind we're using this equation. So we know v is 33.33 squared is equal to v sub 0, which is 0, right? So 0 squared is still 0, plus 2 times a, which we don't know, times delta x, which is 240. 2 times 240 is 480. So 480a, and then we want to divide both sides by 480 to get a by itself. So just do 33.33 squared, and then divide that by 480. And when you do this, you're going to get A is equal to 2.31435. Um, and so you can round however you want, um, right? 
So you can round however you want to round. Uh, but keep in mind the units is going to be meters per second squared. Right? And so keep in mind we used a little bit more a rounded value here. So uh, it might be a little, if you want to use a more exact, just make sure to add more threes on because it was just repeating. But yeah, so this is essentially your answer for A. Uh, round however you want. So this is A. Now let's move on to B. So we've got A now. This is A. So B wants us to solve for T, right? How long does it take? So T is what we're solving for. And so we have every variable now. So we can choose which equation we want to use. I'm going to go ahead and choose, uh, we're solving for t. And so the equation that pops out to me is this one right here, just because it's the shortest compared to the rest, right? There's only, uh, it's just uh, easier to solve. So we're going to use this one. So v equals v sub zero plus a times t, right? Because we're solving for t, we have a, we have v sub zero, and we have v. So we can just use all these. So it's going to be uh, v, which is 33.33, is equal to v sub zero, which is zero, plus a, which is 2.31435 multiplied by t. So we can just divide both sides by this, right? So just go ahead and do this. 33.33 divided by 2.31435. So when you do this, you're going to get t is equal to 14.4 uh, seconds. So this is the time unit, right? Because we're using seconds. Right, because this is in meters per second, this is meters uh, per second squared. So they just cancel and then the seconds is on seconds is left, right? So you just have seconds. So t equals 14.4 seconds, uh, right? So keep in mind these values might be a little bit off because we rounded, but just make sure you use a more exact value if your teacher wants you to do that. But yeah, so this is your answer to B, this is the time, this is your answer to A, right? So these are your answers and hopefully you found this useful.